Did you know that you can fully, completely customize your Discogs collection? Well, you can. We are going full nerd here today, folks. I'm going to show you how you can easily add and delete custom fields in your Discogs collection, as well as some that you might want to add. First, let's take a look at the collection fields. If you think of a spreadsheet, you have rows and you have columns. The rows are all of the releases in your collection. The columns are the fields available to fill in for each item. Lots are defaults, but you can add some yourself. So there are three different categories that these fall into. One is the default release information. That's data that Discogs already has input, the band name, the release name, the release number, and a whole bunch of other items. Next is the default collection fields specific to you and what you input. And I believe these include media condition, sleeve condition, notes, and folder. Those four fields, that's it. While there are limitations in what you can add, the simple functionality allows you to get quite creative in how you manage your collection and sky's the limit when it comes to the type of fields that you might want to add. So why would you add a custom field in your collection? One, you want to track how much you spent on the record. Two, you might want to track the specific date you purchased the record on or added it to your collection. You might want to expand the notes into specifics in terms of media and album sleeve. And you might want to track when you last listened to it. Or if you're like me and a massive, massive nerd, you might want to track all of the above and how many spins you've given that record over the lifetime that you've owned it. So how does it work? Let's dive in. Right here we have my Discogs collection. When you are logged into Discogs, navigate to your collection tab just below the Discogs logo in the upper left hand corner. This is where you will see everything you have in your collection. I'm already on that page. On the right side of the page, just above your collection, you should see a few different links. Manage folders, manage custom fields, change currency, and export my collection. We're going to select manage custom fields. This section will show you the current active fields that you have in your collection. Below this list, you'll see a blue add a field button, and you can also see saved fields. You can toggle up and down to sort what shows up first, what shows up last, etc. And you can also remove it. First off, let's look at deleting a field. Now, one field that has been essentially made redundant is the release ID. I used to add this to every single piece of my collection. Now that they've actually included that in the export of the collection, well, I don't need to have that anymore. So I'm just going to go over here. I'm going to select that delete box, remove for that release ID. And I'm going to go ahead and hit save fields. Now let's actually go back to my collection. And I can see that it is no longer there. When I click into the Decemberists, it's no longer there. I don't need to copy that from the URL anymore or from the release code. Let's go back once again to manage custom fields and I'm going to add a new field and it relates to that Decemberists album. I have this new series that I am doing called 60 second album reviews and every week I'm trying to post two new 60 second album review shorts and I want to be able to track which ones I've done and which ones I have not yet done. So I'm going to add a field that relates to that. So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and I'm going to click add a field. By default, it allows for text area, but you can click that and you can have it be a drop down as well. So I could actually create a drop down that says yes, being that I have created and published a 60 second album review or no, I have not. Or I could do a text area with up to three lines. So I'm going to go ahead and add 60 second review and I'm going to leave it as a text area as opposed to a drop down. And I'm going to see 
if I can actually expand this to five lines. Let's go ahead and hit save fields and see what happens. And now I'm going to go back to my collection and take a look at this. So you can see I've got paid. So what I paid for it, that's a rough estimate. I've got my grading. I've got my media description save. I can see I last played it a few days ago and it is the only wood colored vinyl as of 617 2024. I wanted to add that particular one because I wanted notes on why I chose that particular version of the release versus all of the others. Now that becomes important when it comes to things like albums that have hundreds of versions. I have play notes as to whether it plays at 33 and a third or 45 RPM. And then I have my listen counts. And so now I have my 60 second review and I'm going to go ahead and grab that actual review from my notes app and see how much it'll fit into it. Okay, it doesn't fit the whole thing. So I'm gonna actually go in and I'm gonna edit my fields. And let's see what happens if I can make that bigger. So once again, manage my custom fields. Let's change it to 10 lines, save. And now we're gonna go back to my collection. Let's edit that one more time and see what happens. It seems to have a limit in terms of how many characters you can actually put in your text box. So in this case, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to change that field to be a drop down instead. So let's go drop down and my choices are as follows. Now you can see you can have different lines in terms of what you want it to be. And I'm going to say my choices are yes and no. Save fields. Let's go take a look and see what that did to the custom field. I've changed it to yes. For some reason it default carried over what I had in it before. So let me let's actually go to a different release now and see what that looks like. Dive, Frog in Boiling Water, great album by the way. This also made it into my 60 second album reviews, both it and the Decemberists hitting my best of 2024 so far mid-year list. And there we go. That is how you can easily add custom fields straight to your Discogs collection. What fields do you have in there or what are you looking to add now that you know how to do it? Let me know down in the comments. What are some things that you would like to know how to do in Discogs? Again, let me know down in the comments and maybe I'll dig into that one next. Next, why not take a look at some things that I really wish Discogs would change. As one person said many moons ago, and people seem to continue saying when they join the Fence Post membership, this dude's a damn nerd. I am Andy, this is the Fence Post Vinyl Channel, and I'll see you in the next video.